وعليكم السلام Um, Honduras is in Central America, um, below Nicaragua and above Guatemala, um, and next to El Salvador. It's right in the middle of Central America. Um, yeah. um, I, I am a teacher, and I did previously uh, work abroad, and I decided I wanted to do it again. And I haven't seen this part of the world or experienced this part of the world. So I, I applied and I guess that's why I'm here. <laughs> okay, um, Ramadan is, well, I haven't really, because I'm the only Muslim here that I know or that I've met, um, it's, uh, it's a little difficult because I guess we take for granted the Ramadan spirit we have in South Africa where everyone is fasting around us and like there's just this and everyone, the whole country knows about Ramadan and you, I mean you can walk into any store and there's like Ramadan specials and those kind of things that uh, I guess there's none of that here because the, the Muslim population is really small. Um, there's also, um, apparently there's a big Arab community in, um, one of the biggest cities called San Pedro Sula, which is, uh, about five hours away from, uh, the place that I'm in at the moment. Um, it's, um, so there's apparently a mosque and the Muslims here, uh, uh have been here for over, apparently over a hundred or a hundred something years. Uh, I have not met any, but I have friends here who have um, friends who are Honduran Muslim or Honduran Arab Muslim, and it's um, it's quite interesting to hear their stories. A lot of them came in the like 1800s and opened up these big companies, and it just became really successful. And yeah, so a lot of them are in that area, more the bigger cities. Uh, and I've researched and I found two mosques, one which I hope to visit next weekend. Um, but other than that, yeah, I haven't really um, uh, have met any other Muslims. So <laughs> unfortunately, the, the spirit of Ramzan is a little bit like less around me. But it's also more around me because more people are asking me like questions like, oh, why aren't you eating today? And like, it's a big Actually, it's a big offense not to like take food here culturally. So when my students would offer me food, I, I, I had to prepare them in advance that next week, don't offer me food because I'm not going to take it or I'll take it home, but I won't eat it now. Um, so like, even though it's less prevalent around you, you're talking about it constantly, um, which is nice, I guess, like having to explain to people. Yeah. <laughs> Um, um, I was actually surprised at the reactions I've gotten. I assumed that they would, would be a little bit scared or taken aback considering the Western um, kind of uh, assumptions that I put on Muslims uh, today. But I was surprised there are actually a lot of like the adults that um, knew a lot more about Islam than I thought and were very curious and like sat down and said, please tell me more, explain to me why you do this and how does this work? And it was actually, it's really nice to like have that experience. Um, I assumed that they'd all be a little bit taken aback, but they weren't. They were really interested, especially since Honduras is a very Christian country. They all like go to church every day sometimes they're very religious but um they were very open to it and they wanted to know more which was really nice um i had a, an experience in before i came here i um i was um i had an interview for a mexico job and they asked me if i was muslim and they said because we don't know we don't want any bad people and that like kind of hurt me i was like oh i thought that 
being even though you're not uh, like the U.S., I thought that because you are um, from like Mexican, your views would be a little different. But I was surprised how much they were influenced. So I kind of had that same assumption when I came here, but it wasn't like that at all, which is nice. <laughs> Um, okay, the language, they speak Spanish, uh, so I am trying desperately to learn Spanish. It's going very slowly, unfortunately. Um, they, um, they, the education system, I, I would compare it to South Africa a little bit. Um, unfortunately, there are the similar problems when it comes to third world countries, because it is a third world country, um, where there's lack of resources in certain areas, uh, lack of qualified teachers and textbooks and those kind of things. Um, and unfortunately, the system is very controlled by the governmental influences, and sometimes, um, even if a few people are trying to make a difference, it's very difficult because of the system, obviously. Um, and um, well, I guess it's um, it's not a bad system, though. They have a lot of bi the 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 private schools are bilingual schools, so that's the kind of uh, school I'm working in at the moment, where they try to teach English and Spanish together and like they'll have students learn geography and English and then they'll have other Spanish subjects for example but like um, I think that it's the private school system I think is decent um, but the public school system apparently is the same like the more rural schools in South Africa which I haven't yet experienced but I've heard um, not so great things about it. Um, the population, the people in general, they are very, very friendly culture. They um, always want to like invite you to their homes as soon as they meet you. Sometimes it gets a bit awkward because they don't speak English and they just insist you have dinner with them and you end up sitting there and not really knowing what to say, but they showing you pictures and they're trying to converse with you and you're trying to converse with them, but it's just like a little awkward sometimes. But I guess that comes with being a foreigner in, a, in another country. You have to adapt. And, I'm trying, I guess, with the language, but <laughs> it's going very slowly. Um, I have, okay, you can't see any now, but I have post-its all over my room for different things, trying to like remember different words. Um, but yeah, Honduras, um, the place is beautiful, the place itself. I am in a city called Gracias, a town called Gracias. Um, it is, uh, Gracias means thank you. It is on the foot of um, the highest mountain in Honduras, so it's gorgeous outside there's just mountains everywhere and um, Honduras does have um, ruins as well ancient Mayan ruins which is awesome to see um, I went a couple of weeks ago um, and it's just uh, the Mayan ruins are in Guatemala Mexico and Honduras and they all were the same family that ran or like the same royal family that built all of these um, things so that's interesting to see and it's also part of the Caribbean uh, the Caribbean, which is very cool. Inshallah, I'll be going to uh, some of the beaches soon and seeing all of that. They have the second largest um, barrier reef in the world after the Great Barrier Reef. Um, so it would be cool to see the marine life as well. Yes. Mm. Very hot, very hot all the time. Um, rainy season is coming up and apparently then it cools down a little bit, but for the moment, moment it's quite um, sweltering, yeah. And apparently, sorry. Um, Martha, I didn't hear that. Oh no, Jazakala, thank you for having me on. Um, it's cool if I've taught anyone anything or if they're interested in anything, they can contact me, I guess, somehow. Um, I do have a blog which I have put some of my experiences on. Myself and um, the lady I live with, we share a blog and we uh, just randomly put our experiences on and what we think of the country or any thoughts that come to mind when if, when we see something interesting or different from our home country. So I guess if, I'm just happy if I've taught somebody something or if I've enlightened somebody in some way. Um, yeah, that's all.
Wa alaikum salam.